Following on from a video I made a month or so back about the diameter of the moon, um, there was a very mixed reaction to it. Obviously, it has nothing to do with the subject of atheism, which I used to make a lot of videos about. Um, I'm really not so interested in that anymore. Um, I still think young earth creationism is full of nonsense and view it as a sort of conspiracy theory. Um, and I have been accused when talking about the processional numbers um, in incorporated in the dimensions of ancient monuments and apparently in the diameter of the moon of going down conspiratorial rabbit holes. Well, maybe I am a bit, but um, I just think these things, if they are coincidences, are very intriguing. Um, you know, what are the chances of that? So on that note, it's not just the moon which has an interesting processional number if you divi divide its diameter into miles. The diameter of the moon is 2160 miles. Um, some people say, well, that's just coincidence. Um, but the diameter of the Earth also is significant in a particular way, which I'll try to explain. The diameter of the Earth is within 20 miles or so, 7,920 miles. Okay. The 2,160 mile diameter of the Moon is really accurate. That's within a mile to my knowledge. And then the diameter of the Sun is 864,000 miles. And I think that's accurate to within a thousand miles. So in all cases it's way less than 1% of a... Um, if it is coincidence. Um, but anyway, the point is, if you happen to know what the diameter of the Sun, the Earth and the Moon are, and you wanted to incorporate units of measurement which relate to each other, and are, you know, relate to this phenomenon known as the precession of the equinoxes, um, you might want to start by um, figuring out how the how these astronomical objects relate to each other. And what seems to me is if you divide the diameter of the moon into thirds, then you have a unit of 720 miles, which also happens to be a precessionally significant number. Um, it takes 72 years for the precession of the equinoxes to move by one degree. So 360 times 72 is 25,920, the full precessional cycle. Now this, this is a bit of an estimate. No one knows exactly what that number is. I've heard 25,776. Some people say 24,000, some say 26,000. Um, it's hard to figure out because it seems to be based on Milankovitch cycles, um, which are also connected with ice ages, and that is the variations in the tilt of the Earth's orbit, no, not just the precessional cycle itself. But anyway, before I get too bogged down in detail, trying to think of these things off the top of my head. This 720 mile unit, um, keep in mind 72, 720, 7200, they're all just multiples. Um, so there are other numbers which are precessionally significant, such as 54, 72, 108, 216, um, 144 and so on. But anyway, this number, 720, if we call that our base unit, then three units, you've got the diameter of the Moon. Eleven, minutes, eleven units, you have the diameter of the Earth. And 1,200 units, you have the diameter of the Sun. So, either the ancients figured this out, or someone else figured this out, and calibrated the mile so that it fitted in with this particular 
um, way of measuring the sun, the earth and the moon. And I don't claim to know for certain who was the first to figure this thing out, but I just think it's interesting. Um, one other thing before I go, the ancient Egyptians had a unit of measurement called the Egyptian royal cubit and the great pyramid at Giza in Egypt um, was the, the, the base perimeter, each side along the bottom edge of the p Great Pyramid at Giza was 440 units. I think the height was 280 units. Um, but anyway, 440 is interesting and it connects with the mile in terms of... Um, I used to work on the railways in Britain and um, the when you walk along a railway line there are marker posts every quarter of a mile and a quarter of a mile is 440 yards half a mile is 880 three quarters of a mile 1320 yards and the full mile is 1760 yards and the base perimeter of the Great Pyramid at Giza in Egypt is also 1760 Egyptian cubits Coincidence? I don't know, but it's it's interesting. And that's the point. I'm not trying to make any great claims about, oh yes, our ancient ancestors were able to do this, that, and the next technologically amazing thing. Maybe they could. Maybe a lot of knowledge has been lost. I suspect it has. But anyway, that's all I want to say for now. And uh, thanks for watching, and see you next time.